How's it going? Trey Clark here, as I usually am. Not so much lately. I've been in exile in digital chains for speaking my mind, and I'm not the first or the last that is going to suffer such a horrible fate, but it hasn't been that bad. Luckily, I have the dogs and my family, my children, and a real life, and uh, that comes into play at some point. So, uh, life is good. But every now and then I'm like, God dang it, I just see something or think of something and I want to get it out there. And uh, it's a little frustrating. But if that's the worst thing that happens uh, so far, which it won't be, of course, uh, I'll live. But uh, I did have a chance to kind of take a step back and I've done more listening than talking, which is a lot for me. Uh, as far as I've been on a few podcasts, I'm getting ready to do a radio show, and uh, which involves a lot of me talking, but I've been forced to just kind of listen. And I had to ask myself, why, why am I doing this flat earth thing? And then I had to really get down to brass tacks and, and remind myself, I don't know that the earth is flat. I have no evidence that it is flat. I have evidence that it is not what they say it is. I have a P900 right here that can see farther than they tell me that I can see. That is a fact. I know that I can see farther than eight inches per mile square. No problem at all. Oddly enough, I've invited people to come look at it with me and nobody has taken me up on that. Uh, not anyone. And since, uh, until the Flat Earth Conference, I'd never talked to a like-minded individual. Never talked to anyone who agreed with me. Uh, my, <laughs> my family and many of my friends uh, think that I'm basically just an idiot clown. People that used to come see me at shows and hold me in high regard in a lot of areas no longer do. So there's a, a price to pay. A lot of y'all probably have uh, experienced that if you're vocal about it. Some people are maybe smart enough not to. Luckily, my vocation does not require people to think that I am sane, that is just uh, that I'm good at what I do. So why am I personally, I had to ask myself, spending so much time on the flat earth? Because at the end of the day, I do not give a shit about what shape the earth is. I can sleep just as good at night if it is a spinning ball. I can't sleep good at night, well at night. Mom, if you're up there correcting my grammar, uh, if they say it's fact and then it's not provable by any stretch of the imagination, matter of fact, it's disprovable. That's where I think most of us are. So what I want to relay to everyone, because I think a lot of us probably follow Many of the same people uh, that I got, uh, I was fortunate enough to meet at the Flat Earth Conference. At the Flat Earth Conference, uh, got to meet Owen Benjamin, who's you know, I felt like I was a year ahead of him at all times, but he's so entertaining that uh, I wanted to meet him. And uh, you know, Jaronism. Uh, uh, my mind's going blank right now. Rob Skiba, those cats, Dave Weiss. And they do just such a good job of relaying information. And, and uh, But I want to throw this out there without saying that anyone, that I have any evidence that anyone's doing anything wrong at all. It's just a thought experiment of just saying we're all human. And the thing that I'm afraid of is that I don't see a lot of people taking a step backwards after finding bad evidence. I, I can't place any bad evidence, but me personally, I was watching Jaronism and he didn't say, hey, I know, he was just basically thought experiment and what the hell else are we supposed to do? So this isn't a shot at him at all, but I found myself going, well, yeah, wait a minute. This is, and uh, uh, what it was was just basically you know, if you use the eight inches per mile squared and you started it at each mile, the earth would be around less than 3,000 miles around. 
And I was like, something's really screwed up here. Well, I asked around, which is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to find yourself in a position where you uh, are perplexed, not honorary and right that the rest of the world is total idiots. And uh, an engineer friend of mine basically said, well, you can't just go from mile to mile because the, the doesn't become squared unless you stay where you are. I'm not going to get into the math of it, but it fixed everything right then. And it was humbling because I was, I was, you know, what about this? What about this? And it's easy to get into that because we get berated. We get called fools. I know as much as anyone. I am probably going to win a uh, retard of the month for some kind of page that I, you know, chimed in on with something that I thought was helpful. And for instance, when I got this camera, the P900, I thought I was going to uh, have some really cool conversations with people. I mean, I'm a musician. I talk to people that are like open up to everything. It's like, yeah, man, consciousness and, and this and that, and what is government and all this stuff. And you start talking about, yeah, but I can see too far. It, the earth isn't curved like it is. I swear to God, it's like you just told them like you, you're going to cure your hiccups by sticking a water moccasin fang in your, in your shoulder. They think you are literally crazy. And I was not expecting that. So uh, it's important to remember that we've all gone through the same uh, educational system. So to th what I see is people on the flat earth side which I'm not a flat earther. I don't know that it's not round. I just know it's not 26,000 miles around 25 and then spinning at a thousand and just, you know, all the nonsense that goes along with the stars and everything. Uh, but I don't know that it's not a ball. I can't know it because we can't find out. Uh, we don't have rockets. We can't, I, I don't, I'm not going to probably ever launch a balloon in my life. I can only rely on the people that do. And that's good, you know, but I don't know that the earth is flat, even though the horizon rises to eye level on a earth that is a hundred thousand times as big around as a ball as they tell us it is, it would probably have very much the same effect for the, the altitudes that we're, we're approaching, uh, with, with cameras and stuff. So we really don't know that it's flat. We just know that it's not what they say it is. And that's enough to start digging. Okay, so if your motivation is to be right, then you're going to find yourself very frustrated because you're not going to convince anyone of anything. Uh, that's why everyone, you know, probably the most common phrase in Flat Earth is do your own research. Because we know no one was going to convince us that the Earth was flat or not as round as they say it was. You have to do it yourself. You have to walk that, uh, that mile. So arguing is just for not. One thing I do want to say is I want you to be aware that some people are monetized. I don't have any, sorry, let me get rid of this banner. I don't have any evidence that anyone has done anything wrong, but I also know my gut is correct. And whenever there's money involved, you have to pay extra special attention. There are people that probably started out the same way that we did and going, wait a minute, something's wrong, but there is money involved. And it's important to note, I'm not saying anyone is doing it. I love the fact that people are making money, enough money to create this awesome content and, and videos and, and, uh, and research and interviews and podcasts and, and stuff. So I don't want to rock that boat at all, but it is important to say to yourself, what if we were wrong? What if we were humbled in such a way that we just had to start over? It is a floating ball. I don't, it, it might be, but it's not what they say. So I feel pretty confident about that. But if you get what I'm getting at, what if it's not flat? What if it's something totally different than what we thought? There are a lot of people that are going to be out of work. And I just think it's smart to just remember who you're following. And I hate calling it that. 
I just call it listening to people and I take what I think is relevant with me and I leave the rest behind and uh, and I'm glad that the we're, we're lucky to be in an age even though they're messing with it on, on uh, YouTube that there are so many people creating content that we wouldn't have gotten 10 years ago okay the people that disagree with us are not idiots they're the same they have the same education system that we did so uh, I've seen way too much of people going whatever globe tard if you're calling someone a globe tard you're probably calling my three children globe tards and everyone that I know they're not retarded okay we've had a different path whatever made us take a different uh, angle as far as looking at something that's that's our business and we're not going to we're not here to convince people to change that's what religious groups do okay the uh we're not a movement that's not what this is it is a sharing of information it's more like a scientific community it actually is way more scientific of a community than the scientific community we're not doing peer reviews you don't have to get uh, approved in order to have your input be valid I mean I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff presented and uh, so we don't have a Pope we don't tithe we don't have this you know people are doing work that need money to not have to take up all their time doing other stuff and if it's worth it to us to have this content keep being presented if we trust them as a source then it's it's worth my you know five ten dollars a month or something like that so uh but i think the main re i was thinking about this analogy is that as far as they're lying to us okay so what uh, or whatever they're lying to us and nasa how does it affect your life just go to work you dumb it down every time i get into you know pickle I just dump it down to the lowest common denominator and go, okay, so when does it quit making sense? And then just blow it back up. What if your local government said that you and your subdivision were all sitting on top of a diamond mine, okay? Uh, and then they said, and because of that, your land is worth much more than what it originally was, so we're gonna jack it up, you know, umpteenth percent, and uh, we're gonna charge you for it. And of course, the first thing you're going to ask is, well, how much and all this stuff. You're not allowed to know about it. You're not allowed to go there. And whatever you do, don't dig. Don't go there. So I, I'm stretching a little bit. Or I'm reaching, but I think you get my point. You would be very frustrated. Analogies are not the worst way to go about figuring out what makes sense or not. So if someone said, there's a diamond the size of a refrigerator in your backyard, and we're going to tax you for it. You're goddamn right you're going to want to go back there with a shovel and then you're going to be really mad if they say no you can't even do that uh just trust us you're going to find yourself very very frustrated so it's natural that we get mad at people that do that to us but it's also natural that we get mad at people that ridicule us and i'm not playing a victim here no one's put a gun to my head and run my mouth online and, uh, and sometimes I've done it in ways that, that was sparking uh, such insulting conversation. But it's natural, but that's not gonna win anything. And the reality is we're not trying to win anything. We're trying to figure out the truth. And I think that if we get to a point, we've, we've had this big uh, splurge of knowledge and it's hard to drink in. And a lot of technology and a lot of being woke uh, has kind of fallen on a lot of different types of personalities and then we intermesh and, and uh, I think the main thing is we still look at this with calm heads and go, all right, we might be wrong. We definitely don't know that we're right, except for that it's not a 26,000 mile an hour spinning globe at a thousand miles an hour that we know we know that part so stick to the stuff we know and I guess at the very least the news is good we get to know stuff that my grandparents didn't get to know 
they knew stuff that I'll never know as far as, you know, how life was then and, and, and who knows, you know, how history is, is being relayed to us. But the news is good. And I think the whole idea is for us to just be in a frenzy and, and in despair and just pick up, a, even if you can't afford a camera, these aren't that expensive, you know, a little over 500 bucks. I think they're cheaper now that the 1000 has come out. Uh, get some binoculars and just take some time. Grab your dog and go out uh, across the lake and just get your binoculars and see how far you can see. Put your boots on the ground. Do something to where you're like, you can tangibly say, I at least know this. I at least know I can see four and a half miles across the lake. And then you, you start to get this momentum of saying, okay, I don't know what it is, but I do know that they're full of shit about this. I know that for a fact, or that they're most, most likely full of shit that all the Nazis and devil worshipers that started NASA probably don't have our best interest in mind as far as uh, not uh, using propaganda and, and brainwashing techniques. So uh, I'm actually just really excited that I was born at the time where I could afford a camera. I live on the beach. Uh, I, there's the internet where you can gather information. We can exchange our ideas and stuff. So as much as it can be frustrating, remember the news is good right now. It's just up to us whether we want to uh, use it that way or feel sorry for ourselves or get called names and go, fuck you and all that stuff. No, nah, there, there's, there's no time for it. And there's no use for it. It's not useful. So hope you all are great. Hope uh, everyone is having a good new year. And once again, my name is Trey Clark. We'll see you next time. Cheers.